Welcome everybody to the Czech blog. I'm here with our good friend Jator Pierre today. We're back on our series about fat loss. This is part three. If you haven't checked out parts one and two, there's links below, so please do. Um, okay, so I know better than to ask you how you're doing by now. How are you? <laughs> but I haven't thought of a better question, so we're just going to skip it all together. I'm going to assume that you're great. That's rude, James. <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, so, so today, in, in part three of um, the series, I'm really excited because we're going to talk about things that I don't think people normally consider when they're discussing or thinking about how to lose body fat. Uh, and we're going to talk about respiratory challenges and posture. Uh, so, so well, let's just dive right in. What, what is the relationship here? What's going on with those? Yeah. <clears throat> well, let, 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 let's dive in. <laughs> And um, for for fun, uh, we're on a, a time. We have a time schedule now because That's right. apparently I flap my gums way too much, and <laughs> no one listens to the ends of the video. You're not so supposed to reveal going... these sorts of secrets, Jitsor. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're fun to re re reveal. <laughs> uh, so in 15 minutes or less. Right. Um, right. Yeah. What's What's very interesting is like when we look at what we've talked about in the past, yeah. uh, emotion, uh, mental, uh, the attachments to body fat, as well as this kind of ancestral lens around palatability, uh, seductive nature of food, uh, mm. caloric intake, uh, which we'll get into. Uh, there's some subtle things that are not uh, often talked about when it comes to body comp changes. And again, that's even with when we're talking about muscle gain or we're talking about fat loss. Mm -hmm. Of course, then inclusive of that would be performance, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and two of those things are posture and respiratory mechanics. And, you know, we can tie these back into our other videos as well. And quite simply said, when you look at, when you are looking at someone's posture, uh, or their inability to do kind of the primal pattern movements that Paul talks about, squat, bend, twist, gait, lunge, push, pull. Um, when those are inhibited from a survival perspective of the body, the body knows that you have less ability to survive in a natural environment or in a uh, ancestral environment. Mm. Because of that internal perspective, what that does is it actually causes a stress response in the body. So we've done many videos on the HPA access. Right. Uh, so that lack of ability to, let's say, squat or lack of ability to keep eyes with a horizon or lack of ability to push fully or pull fully actually raises physiological load and stress, which starts to dysregulate HPA access. So when we think about uh, posture, when we're looking at someone's posture, we're also thinking about how is that also tied into their mental and emotional state. You can do all of the corrective exercise in the world. If their posture is driven by someone's mental and emotional state, let's say, as a quick example, uh, I feel the weight of the world on my shoulders, internal world. Um, and I have a fear of looking the world in the eye due to some past trauma from the past. And for me, what trauma means is just a sense of separation. Uh, I can't look up. I don't want to look up. And I have this uh, forward head, upper cross syndrome going on. It doesn't matter how much work we do from a corrective perspective, trying to address the posture to reduce stress to help someone lose body fat or gain muscle, et cetera. So posture is a huge missed factor when it comes to body fat loss or, or body comp, comp change, especially when all of the other pieces are in place. Mm. So when we look at things that we've already talked about, you're working on your mental and emotional perspective. Uh, you're working on your nutrition, 
you're working on palatability and uh, seductive nature in food and what food represents to you from an emotional perspective. You're doing things in relationship to the six principles. And those things are in place, but yet you're still stuck. Mm. Some of the unexplored areas is simply, what is your posture? Mm. Because that can actually be a stressor on the system, mm. which stress, as we know, can dysregulate HPA access, and that can cause a whole plethora of issues downstream from there that are inhibitory to body fat loss. Mm. Mm. So that's kind of a short version of the body fat perspective from a postural perspective. Mm. Then if we look at respiratory mechanics or breathing, um, we can tie those back into posture as well as mental and emotional state as well as the ancestral lens. Mm. So when you think about breathing, well, we all know that breathing is very important. Uh, you die without it. Mm. And a very easy way to see how faulty breathing patterns can elicit a stress response in the body, again, back to this HPA access dysregulation. A very easy way to experience that is to, uh, while you're watching this video, cover one nostril and take a deep breath. Okay, you felt that. Now cover the other nostril not close it, but cover it just enough that you can just barely breathe and do that. What was the immediate response in your body? It tenses up. It tenses up. You immediately facilitate something called the, the um, sympathoadrenal medullary system. It's part of the <laughs> HPA <laughs> access. But it's the neuron system that fires as soon as a stress occurs. So uh, if you're in an office and you hear a book drop, you get that shot of stress. Mm. That's the sympathoadrenal medullary system that's driven by neurons. So when you just when we just inhibited our own breathing and we felt the immediate stress response that you have. And you consider that from a postural perspective. Uh, how is a person's respiratory mechanics when they're in upper cross syndrome or what other, all the other postural distortions that are available to us? Yeah. Uh, not good. Yeah. Um, from a mental and emotional perspective, uh, if my posture is not driven by uh, my standing, si uh, sitting posture, etc., it's driven by my mental and emotional state, back to our original example, yeah. uh, stress of the world not wanting to face the world and look up at it, mm. that inhibits breathing as well. And what you're seeing is that all of these postural things and breath, thing, um, breath uh, malfunctions essentially lead to a stress response. Mm. So if you breathe on average, based on what I've read, 25,000 breaths a day, if each one of those breaths come with that stress response that you just had, then underlyingly, even if everything else in your world is perfect mm. and low stress, you have a subtle stress going on through respiratory mechanics. You may have a subtle stress going on through postural mechanics. And why the subtleties are actually more important, at least at this point, is because they're insidious, yeah. 25,000 breaths a day. That is a tremendous amount of repetitive stress response which leads to this chronic stress picture yeah. that go goes essentially unnoticed. Yeah. And if you look at research, the experience of stress itself can literally start to make you fat and diabetic. Yeah. It can raise your blood sugar when we become stressed. Uh, it can make it harder for glucose to get into your cells. It can make you hungrier and crave more sweets. Uh, it reduces your ability to burn fat. It mm -hmm. starts to dysregulate HPA access. It reduces all of your DHEA and growth hormone, testosterone, um, thyroid stimulating hormone. 
It makes you less sensitive to insulin. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Mm. And that can all be driven simply by having postural issues or breathing issues, mm. which are usually co synergistic, inclusive of back to the mental and emotional state, right, that we've talked about, as well inclusive of, in our original video, uh, the palatability and or seductive nature of food, because the other thing that can also drive postural distortion as well as respiratory mechanics issues mm. is also food intolerance mm. and gut hyperpermeability. Mm. So when we start to kind of peel this back, yeah. they're all intertwined with each other um, extremely intricate, intricately. So... Uh, one of the ways to change that is, well, quite honestly, is to get evaluated by a Czech practitioner who can look at your breathing mechanics, who can look at your posture, especially if you're a person who's trying to have some level of body confidence not changing. Mm. Uh, because the when we're talking about the physical drivers, it could be something as simple as you're not breathing properly and or you also have postural distortion and both of those alone separate from each other can be enough to inhibit your ability to elicit any goal that you're going after mm. inclusive of balance of mental and emotional state right when you look at back to this sympathoadrenal medullary system or the hpa access or the sympathetic system mm. with that very shallow breath, we're essentially telling the body we're in a fear state. Mm -hmm. When you look, if you and I walked outside right now and there was a, a loose saber-toothed tiger, we'd immediately have that response to flight or fight. Mm -hmm. One of those responses would be a shallow breath to get ready for right. what you need to do. Yeah. And that's happening all day with many people which then starts to affect, again, back HPA access, the gut microbiome, sleep, yeah. movement, thoughts, behaviors. So it's all intricately intertwined. And a lot of people don't consider the, the breath and posture aspects of any body comp change that we're going after. Yeah. And breath and postural distortions often, uh, the res respiratory challenges and postural uh, a distortion often, often go hand in hand too, right? I mean, if you've got that slumping of the shoulders and hunching over, then you've got your di diaphragm compressed, right? And all of those sort of things. So, so um, likely if you've got one, you've got the other too. Yeah, my, my personal experience is that um, if you've got one, you've got all of the others. Mm, right. <laughs> the mental and emotional one, something's going on in the background. Right. Uh, the gut one, something's going on. Uh, they're they're all intertwined. There, there literally is no separation between any of this. Mm -hmm. When you look at Chinese medicine, they don't even have words to create separation between mind and body. Mm -hmm. mm. We've done that through a kind of reductionistic view on the body. That is a long other story, but yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Um, and, and so when you, um, you see in somebody this whole myriad of different challenges working together, um, you know, we've talked a lot about peppers and, and these sorts of, and obviously, uh, addressing the mental emotional has got to be crucial. Uh, but do you, do you take, is there, how do you address these different layers at the same time, right? So, so when it comes to posture and respiratory challenges, do you sort of say, well, look, I'm going to hold off on these until we work with some of these deeper issues or, or does it, I mean, I'm sure in some ways it depends upon who the client is and, and their particular challenges. Yeah. What I love about what you said is, uh, you said, you know, how do we address one of these issues? separate mm -hmm. from the other, essentially. Mm -hmm. And the joke is, you can't. Mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of the system. Right. The beauty of the system is, if you're working with a client, no matter where they want to start, let's say they want to start in the physical, or they want to start with nutrition, or they want to start with uh, movement, mm -hmm. you know, and you're making your decisions around how you run your business around mm -hmm. that. 
it actually, at the end of the day, doesn't matter where you start from the perspective of it's all interrelated. Mm. So what does that mean? If I start to work on someone's uh, posture uh, and respiratory mechanics, that is going to have an effect on their mental and emotional state, on their perspective, on their understanding of self. That's going to have an effect down the chain. So we have this you know, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and intuitive bodies. They're all intertwined with each other. Yeah. So the key for me has been uh, finding the place that a client is willing to start. And that's where I start. Right. Because if they're willing, that's going to be helpful to my process. Yeah. Uh, and that doesn't mean I don't challenge at times. Mm -hmm. uh, it does mean that, um, you know, part of my job is, from my perspective, to, uh, to soothe the discomforted and comfort the soothed. <laughs> I said that wrong. So we'll take <laughs> um, uh Part of my job is to comfort the disturbed mm. and disturb the comforted. Mm. So I kind of use that navigation system uh, with a lot of practice of when I'm going to do what. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Well, and look at that. We came in right around our goal time. Fantastic. Oh. Yes. Well, and, and this is great because I, I really don't think that folks consider those, you know, the respiratory challenges and posture um, when we're talking about this. And it was fascinating to see how those interrelate. So um, so that was great. Thanks, Yatur. Um, yeah. So we've got another uh, another complexity that we want to address in our next video. It's the C word. Um and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it a secret, although you'll probably guess what it is for the next video. But um, <laughs> cliffhanger! This is this is what we do. Cliffhangers. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. Thanks, Detour. Uh, we'll talk again soon.